All right, another Quick Tip Tuesday, and uh, this is Quick Tip Tuesday number 10, actually, which I'm pretty stoked on. I'm stoked that uh, I've been able to do this 10 times already, but I've kind of, kind of sucked at getting a second video up during the week, which I need to do to hit my plan this year of making 100 videos for the year, so... Oh, but this week, there will for sure be a second one, because... This came. This is something that you guys have asked me about for almost a year now. At least a thousand of you have commented saying, please, please review this. And this week, I am. That, that video is coming later this week. But comment below. Let me know. Let me know what your guesses are of what you think is in it. Like a thousand of you are going to get it right. Today, though, we are going over the one program that you're probably not using that you should be using. Another question that I get asked a lot, and I just got asked again last week, was how do you go through a ton of images and choose choose just a few images? For instance, on an engagement session, or maybe a portrait session, or a branding session, I might go out and shoot 800 to 1200, maybe, maybe 1300 or more images for a client. And for sessions like that, I'm trying to usually get it down somewhere between 50 and 100 images to actually deliver to the client. I'm actually gonna edit those 50 to 100 images and deliver those. Or for a wedding day, between myself and a second shooter, between the two of us, depending on how long the wedding day is, we, we might come home with four to 6,000 images. And again, I need to quickly ideally, look through those four to 6,000 images and find those seven, eight, 900 images that I'm going to actually edit and deliver to my couple. So needless to say, the process of culling, that's, that's what we call this process of choosing the good ones and getting rid of the bad ones, culling takes a long time. But today, I'm gonna show you how I do it and the program that I use that, that makes it way faster. Before we get into it, make sure to subscribe below, hit the bell so that you get notifications when I post because, because also what's in this box is going to be a giveaway. So, so the next video will be a giveaway uh, for this. Again, comment below what you think it is. And lastly, hit the like button on this video. It helps me, it helps me a ton. The videos where you guys like them versus the videos where you don't, uh, significant difference. You have all the power. <laughs> okay, jumping into today's video, the, the main problem that we're dealing with is when you have a ton of images like that, if I just imported 6,000 images into Lightroom and had to flip through them in Lightroom in their original raw versions, it would be super huge files. It would take a ton of time and would totally bog down my computer. Now, last week though, we learned about smart previews where Lightroom can create a very small file of each of those images. Then we can offline our raws, work on that small file, move very quickly through Lightroom, reconnect it to the originals, export it. If you didn't see that video, click here to watch it and you'll get caught up. But even with that process, that would mean I would have to take 6,000 images, I would have to import them into Lightroom, I would have to select all 6,000 images, say create smart previews, and then wait a day? I don't know. I don't know how long Lightroom would take to make 6,000 smart previews, but it would be a while. And then after that whole process, I could offline the RAWs, just work with the smart previews, and then I would be able to call relatively quickly within Lightroom, but that is not the way to do it. Do not, do not do it that way. If you're doing it that way, you're gonna love this video. Because today, I'm gonna introduce you to Photo Mechanic. In particular, Photo Mechanic 6. So, if you're watching this well into the future, this is Photo Mechanic 6. Photo Mechanic 6 is a crazy powerful, crazy useful feature packed media browser? Yeah, I think that's the best way to put it. They're a media browser. They are a, a program to work with your media, to move it around, to look through it, do things like that. For me and my workflow, I, I really only use it for two things. I use it for ingesting my images or importing them to my computer from an SD card or CF card or wherever you have shot your images. This is how I actually bring them into my computer onto my hard drives and I'll show you why. And then number two, I use Photo Mechanic for culling my images. This is how I look through huge batches of images very, very quickly. I select which ones I want, and then I get rid of the rest. Okay, let's jump into Photo Mechanic. I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm talking about, why, why it's so dang fast. Oh, and real quick, Photo Mechanic is not sponsoring this video at all. I just, 
I just use them all the time, so photo mechanic, free advertising. They do offer a 30 day free trial for anyone, so it's it's not special because of me, but the link is below where you can go over to Photo Mechanic, you can download it, and you get a 30 day free trial of the entire version. They give you the full version, no holds bar for 30 days. Give it a shot. Okay, first I'm gonna plug an SD card into my computer and I'm gonna show you the ingest feature and we're or why I like the ingest feature so dang much. Okay, on here to the computer, and here is our ingest window. This ingest window just pops up as soon as you plug the SD card in, ingest window. But if it is not popped up, you can go up here to file, file, ingest, and then you get the same window. And this window looks super crazy, ridiculously complicated, but it's pretty easy. Right here is the SD card that I just plugged in. I've used 55.3. Gigabytes. I go down here, I keep this on ignore, I keep this on directly into the folder. There's there's all sorts of options you can do. I can put it into a dated folder, into a folder with a different name, into a dated folder, and then a folder with a name. I, I just put it straight into the file structure that I create in Finder. This is why I mainly use Photo Mechanic for all of my ingesting, is that up here I can actually ingest to two disks at the same time. So I can say primary destination, and I can choose one hard drive, and then I can say secondary destination, and I can choose a different hard drive, put those into two different spots, get all this stuff dialed in. I also don't use any of the renaming stuff that you, you could. You could say rename ingested photos as, you could add a number to them, so there's a sequence. I keep both of those off. Then under here, there's the last couple options, open contact sheets and background, erase source disk after ingest. Don't do this. Never do that, that's crazy. Keep your SD cards. Whew. Don't erase the SD card after you've imported it. What if something happened wrong with the import? That's crazy, I can't believe that's even an option. Uh, don't do that. Or unmount source disk after ingest, so that'll just eject the SD card after ingest. And then, uh, then I hit ingest. I'm not gonna do that now because I've already ingested these images. All right, we're gonna actually open up some files that, that I already have in here from our Hawaii trip. All right, so I'm gonna go in here under my working folders and here's my folder system that I create. All right, so let's go in here and we're gonna open up the raw image files. And boom, here is all my images from Hawaii. Down in this bottom left-hand corner, I can see 1,430 images. And that would suck to import 1,400 images into Lightroom, then slowly work through them or have to create smart previews for all these images that I know I'm not gonna edit. And here is where the power of Photo Mechanic comes in. Click on this first image, it opens up into this fabulous, fabulous window that has all my information over here, how I shot this image. And this is the window that we're gonna do most of our culling in. And if you see, if I start flipping through with the arrow keys, I can haul booty. Looks like a video. That is how quickly you can flip through images in Photo Mechanic. Oh, before we jump into this, I have to show you the preferences panel really quickly because this is where you can set up exactly how you want to be able to call. So I like to call with one and three. So threes are my selects, ones are my I selected it on accident and now I want to unselect it. And in here you can see that one is going to be red, three is going to be green. All right, so now that we have those set up, I should hit okay here. And as I flip through my images, if I hit the three key right now, it turns green. Down here I get a little green label and up here I get a little, little green label. So that image has now been classified as a keep. And I can go down here and I can say, ooh, I like, uh, I like that one. Down, I say, oh, that's very cute. Oh, I like the smiles. Very cute. Oh, that one. And you might be asking why I'm not one starring all the images that I don't want. It's super easy to get rid of images that I haven't starred at all later. But really, what the one star is for is if I have said three star to an image, but then I later change my mind and I say, actually, I want the next image, not that image. So I go back to that image and I make that one red. For instance, if I'm going through like this and I say, oh, I like. I like this image, and then I go to this, oh, and I say, oh, I like that one better. Now I'm gonna make that one a three star, I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna say one star to that one, and now I've only kept this one, you'll, oh, that's freaking cute. This is crazy because this is just, this isn't that long ago. When did we go to Hawaii? We went, we went there in September, and Eleanor is already so much bigger. Oh, that one's cute. <laughs> and, and guys, this is legit how fast I call images. I'm going back and forth, I'm saying I want 
I want that one, or no, by that one. I, yes, that one. Going down. I'm looking through my images like this. Oh my gosh, see? Okay, for instance, I just accidentally three-starred that one. So now I can just one star it and it's no longer a three star. Okay, I'm gonna stop right there. I don't need to call all 1400 images to show you the point, but this is a, this is a much faster way of editing. Calling, calling. All right, so what now? I have I've three starred some images. I've one starred some images. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna go in here and close out of this window, go back to our grid view here, and I can see a bunch of images have been greened and a bunch of images have been red color tag and when I go up here to the right I'm gonna see these little color filters and I can click to hide or unhide the red images so this image is red here, let's make a couple make a couple more red for illustration purposes and now those are all red when I click the reds I can turn them on and off and if it has not been colored at all I haven't haven't three started haven't one started haven't done anything to it this uh, this right up here will get rid of all those. So if I get rid of those, and then I get rid of my reds, all I have left is my greens, the images I want. And the next step is super easy. We just click the first one, we hit Command A to select all the images, and then I click and I drag the images into my selections folder. It actually moves those images out. So if I turn my red and my unselected back on, you can see the three stars are no longer there. They are now in this selections folder. And those are the images that I'm then going to import into Lightroom. I'm then gonna make smart previews. I'm gonna disconnect them from the originals. I'm gonna edit the smart preview versions and then I'm gonna reconnect them to the originals, export them, and then be done. <laughs> Again, if you didn't see last week's quick tip, go watch last week's quick tip to understand smart previews, how that works in Lightroom, and why importing 6,000 images or importing 1,400 images into Lightroom is, is crazy and silly, don't do it, and why you probably need to be using Photo Mechanic. If you are shooting sports, or you're shooting people, or you're shooting events, things where there's a lot of images taken, but you're kind of really trying to hone down to just a few images, weddings, for sure weddings. Again, I'm not getting anything from Photo Mechanic. This is just friendly advice from me to you. Use Photo Mechanic. And again, a link to their website is below. They give you a 30-day free trial. You just try it out, full version, no strings attached, and uh, yeah, see what you think of it. And that is your Quick Tip Tuesday for the week. How to move through a ton of images, weed them down to the images that you want using, using one new program. Do it. Go get it. Try it. Love it. Come back. Comment below. Tell me how much you love it and say, Oh, David, thank you so much. Oh, I cannot believe I didn't know about this before. You've suddenly become Italian. <laughs> it was like my, uh, you know, hillside Italian man voice. Oh, David, oh, thank you so much. <laughs> okay, that's really it. And uh, stay tuned this week to find out what's in the box. Yeah. Comment below, let me know what you think of it. Oh, I'll do this. Did I give you a tip? You wanna, you wanna drop? That's what it sounds like when it's dropped. <laughs> oh, it's also droppable. So that, that's a good tip. That's a good hint as what's in the box. It's droppable. I'll see you guys later this week. Cheers.